the recording. So this is the Jeep we're working on. Got two things I'm gonna fix on. I'm gonna fix no reverse, and then I'm gonna fix basically any kind of transmission trouble you have out of, uh, say, 94 and newer Grand Cherokees. But I just wanted to say this before I get started. I usually use GoPros. I've got a whole new fancy, the screen folds around. Well, y'all can't see, sorry. But I'm hoping for what I paid for it, it does a better job than the GoPro. So, let me get in the Jeep. And yes, you're probably wondering like, why am I wasting my time on this? Well, it cranks and runs good. It's a rust bucket and I have to have something to go up and down to the junkyard with. So I get these that come in. They're just, un well, he told me there's nothing wrong with it. There is, but cranks and runs. And that's what the no reverse keeps getting me in trouble. So got to fix that in which reverses, let me crank it up. Reverse is inconsistent. Like it's loud and I apologize, but somebody cut the converter off. So shut the door, maybe it'll be a little quieter. Occasionally you will get reverse. You may can hear like a growling noise. Maybe. And then I'll learn you something else. So right now, yeah. Earlier it wasn't acting up. But what it is, there's two sensors. One creates a certain pressure, the other reads the pressure. And that's how, I have no idea how they work, but that's how they make first, second, and third, is they create like 60 PSI, maybe like 100 PSI, and then maybe like 130, I don't, I don't know. I don't know the numbers. But those sensors change the amount of fluid that goes through to make a gear. It's stupid design, I don't know who come up with that, but it's so finesse to make a perfect gear that's just why you have trouble, literally anytime you have trouble with the first, second, third, it's those two sensors. So we'll get on it, but I was just showing you. If you, if you can tell, like it won't go. I got my foot on the brake, but well, that's no foot on the brake. So it's in like probably third gear to be honest. And now if you pull it down and what's supposed to be first, I think it's in probably second. Y'all seen the storm, it's about to storm. But if you go to neutral, why this works, I have no idea. But you go to neutral and smack it down to first as quick as you can. You can tell it's in first gear. But if you go up, it's in third gear, and then you go back to first, you're still in third gear. So that's just a trick. If you're trying to diagnose for these bad sensors, still ain't got reverse, so luckily my shop's a loop. If you was just trying to get by, get out of a trail, like I said, you can pull it down, go to first gear, and then I guess click up and do third. It's probably drivable, but I'll get it on a lift and show you just more of what we're working with. That's what I was gonna say. I'm not a transmission guy. I've just run across these over the years of doing stuff. So I'll teach you what I know, and I'm actually gonna dig into the transmission. On. I'll talk while I get in the shop. This is just noisy. just to get back in the shop. So as you can tell, this is a junky rig. So what I do, get a stepper bit, make sure you get a stepper bit. So when it does go through, it doesn't like bash any internals. And it just depends on the pan. Yeah, I can see now. So I do just go right there on the edge of that. Usually it's back here if it's like the newer, the completely flat style pan. So where's the frame? I didn't have nothing to put the lift on. But that's what I was saying, like, motor's good in this thing. I'm gonna use it, and if I can fix the transmission, the $550 transmission, give or take. Uh, oh, I admit, I'm not a transmission guy at all. Like, everything I've taught myself, I just learned by doing it. Well, I will, will say, Fritz transmission somewhere in Western Kentucky, he was the one that taught me the thing about the reverse. Evidently, in the tail housing back here, there's something called a sprag, which I'm gonna take apart and figure it out. But it's like a bunch of roller bearings and they're on springs. So whenever you, I guess you command it, it like locks together and holds something where it'll do reverse stuff. But that's where the growling noises come from. Usually I just swap the tail housing. Well, that was on a two wheel drive. But this one, I'm gonna attempt to take apart and figure it out and see if I can take two wheel drive parts and fix that one. I'm gonna let it drain for a while. That thing's still dripping. 
Yeah, it's still leaking. So we'll work on getting the dry shafts out of the way. This thing is rusty, so that may not work. And then I seen Permatex right here, so that's probably been apart, but usually when they're rusty, they don't come apart. So I don't know if I'll be taking out the transfer case by itself or if I'll be taking out the tail housing and everything to get it. But we'll work on getting the drive shafts out of the way, get everything out, and then let that thing just keep on leaking, leaking all it wants. So uh, do some mechanic work. One thing before you start, uh, let's see, Pioneer, Seven four nine. Yeah, y'all can read the number. I can't. But that gasket between the uh, adapter and uh, transmission. So I went ahead and pulled the transmission mount out, and I'm gonna try to do it this way. Like I said, you can see how rusty that was. It just broke off the transmission literally. That bolt won't come out, so still shouldn't matter. But be careful about this sensor because by the time you're flat, you're gonna be on it. But there should be one, two, I don't know, about seven, nine bolts. And going back together, you'll understand why. But just take, knock the park lever off right there and then push it. I can't remember, I'll have to show you when I get it off there. But kick down cable, it's got like a little thing. All I do is just take a pry bar. Oops, sorry. All I do is just take a pry bar and just push up. It'll pop that off. So that's out of the way. I think everything's out of the way. So yeah, taking bolts out and we'll get it on my transmission jack. See if I can get it out of there. Probably put a ratchet strap under here to hold what's left of the transmission up there. I swear I'm probably 15, 20 minutes into this, so not a big job. It's not as big of a job as you sounds like on paper. All right, about another 15 minutes. Let me turn my light on. Like I said, I don't know, this camera may fl flutter like the other one did. But uh, I remember now this is, I know it sounds weird, but it has to be in park to come, come apart. And I'll explain that when I get it apart. But you can see I got a block of wood here. It hung right there. And then there's another block right there. And then it's strapped to it. So it can't go nowhere. So one more bolt. So I don't have the stand like that one over there to fit this camera. So y'all are uh, riding in a chair. Right, here we go. Tension. My transmission jack leaks so fast. I need a new one. But I like this one. It's got big wheels on it. Uh, oh, well. Um, I don't guess y'all can remind me to do something. Hey, rest in Jeep, probably the original transmission. I think that bolt had a nut on the back side. Yeah, it's long. Maybe that's why it wouldn't come out. I'm sure, you probably need a pry bar. If you're doing this in the driveway, like I said, I've done transfer cases off my chest, so do a transfer case and that tail housing is not that heavy. So. One thing I meant to add earlier is this: these three bolts, well, probably just the two, but I let them down because they will go past the aluminum and then be hanging the case. So that's that and that's the park rod and it'll make more sense when I get to explaining everything. I got to thinking, I don't even need to take this apart. It ain't leaking. So I'm not very strong, but I'm gonna try to get it on my table over there. I don't like it. Whew. Picking it up and it caught my pants. Okay. Like I said, I admittedly don't know. I'm not gonna say I don't know what I'm doing. I just don't know what I'm talking about, but I'll explain best I can and hopefully we'll get down there. Worst case, we'll go find another tail housing. But one thing, this is, this should have stayed with the transmission, but it didn't. You can tell the lip will go towards the inside, which that'll be the inside right there. And then this is the part don't lose. There's a little lip right there. It'll hang out on that side. And yeah, that's actually a spacer right there. I think that's, well, if it's stuck, I'm gonna leave it, but that part comes out. And I think that is an, I can't, I may be wrong, but I bet they make different thicknesses for how your clutches come out. Cause when I start tearing apart, you'll see, I've had transmissions. Let me put this back in, I'll show you. You can see two little tits, I'm gonna call them, and there'll be two holes up there. 
So when you apply overdrive, this piston will push out. But what it is, is I've had some that kept blowing that seal out. It's like, what's going on? And wound up, I think I took it apart and added a clutch because that piston was having to go so far out to engage or disengage, whatever it does, that the lip was coming past that drum and it was actually blowing the seal. So I'm gonna set the camera down, start the disassembly. Hope I don't screw nothing up. Tools you need, I have no idea. We'll start with a flathead. I think these don't have pressure on them. So we'll start there. All these clutches should fall out. Be an in and out, an in and out. So you just keep them laid the way they come out of there. Come on, screwdriver. Keep them together. That's where you watch transmission people, they'll just be throwing stuff together and then they'll add another clutch and then they'll take away and add another pressure. These are, if you ever pulled the pan off and seen like a piece of a clip, for some reason these just randomly will break like a piece of it off there and still be fine. So They'll just break like a part of it off and keep on working. So Two of them I believe, yeah. This one. So far, I mean, everything I've done is not overly complicated, but we ain't done yet. We're just getting started. Cross your fingers on this. This is rusty. I think there's one snap ring, and then all the guts fall out. So, one little trick. Don't try to murder them, but just give them a tap. See if you can break, like, the rusty thread lock. T25, so wish me luck on them. Try to clean them out best I can. Make sure there's something better to clean them holes out. I take, uh, that's actually O'Reilly's one, and then take and chisel these bits out, and then I go get the Dewalt Impact rated ones and tap them off in there. I have really good luck out of them. Come on. Not gonna be good results. Oh, that's one. Maybe, maybe. Come on. Yes, I didn't think those was gonna come out. Try not to break the gasket, it's good. Yeah, hopefully this is uh, what I need. There's a clip right here that you have to get you flat duckbill pliers and then spread that out. Hopefully all these guts will fall out. Part stores sell these, you can see kind of what they do. Uh, name brand definitely does better, but part store ones do work. Man, to finesse it around. If I'm completely wrong, I'll do my best on the editing to make it look right. If you could stand it up, as soon as this clip frees up, it'll all fall down. I got a transfer case riding on her back, so. There we go, finally. I knew that, I knew this forever ago. So, not a transmission guy, but that looks like it's been hot before. I don't actually know where the sprag is located. Hey, look at there. Let's see some uh, metal from somewhere. So let's see. There's a bunch of metal back there. That's part. I don't know if there's any way. You can see the park rod goes through there and pushes that. The park rod goes through, and when you pull it in the park, it's going like a spring. So when it finally gets to where it can fall, it falls and catches one of them. And then that's that's the part I was talking about going back together. You got to have this lined up with that because otherwise, if it's right here, it can't push through. You can see it can't push through if this ain't lined up. So evidently, 
What I need is in that. Look at all that metal. Something might right. Golly. Check that out. I'm gonna turn it off and study and I'll get back with you. All right, another case of Dexit here. There is a clip down in there. It's probably hard to see, but it's like any other snap ring. But you have to push all these clutches down. They're spring loaded. So what I've done, and I've done this with three, but I did it with four this time. I've zip tied pieces of metal up here. Now, get that on there. Hopefully, well, you can probably just be here to see it. So now, yeah, just doing it with my finger. This is Harbor Freight special here. Now you can see I got access to that clip. I get in there one handed, sneak it out. Uh, got it started. I had to lay the camera down. Jack, let's go on. There we go. So now we can just hang out. Relieve pressure. Don't fall. I think the two of them make, you can almost do that hand, but I don't 100% know that. Weird looking clip. So now, try this way. Oh. Hey, something ain't right up in here. You don't see something, stuff is falling to pieces. Hey, it's exactly what I, well, not exactly what I'd say I thought. But. So there is what I was taught calling a sprag. It's got roller bearings, these little springs, and it allows it to roll this way. But when you try to go the other way, them springs like wedge yourself in there. So, what are we looking at here? Planetaries are shot. How is it working at all? I think them gears are actually, I don't know. This should be the same in a two-wheel drive. I believe this technically is the only thing different on a two and a four-wheel drive. So, as long as I can clean this, I think this is called a drum. As long as I can clean it up and make it usable. I wonder what those do. It's gotta be like a reducer, like a transfer case, I would assume. All right, well, I'm gonna throw this in the parts washer and, uh, it's nine o'clock on Saturday night, so I'm probably gonna wait and get one in the morning. I really don't know what I'm doing. We're gonna, we're gonna, it's gonna work though. Guarantee it. Before I forgot to tell you this, I wanted to show you. What was so confusing, and I know y'all probably don't have a clue what I'm talking about. This is a older transmission. So that's a 93, four and five that has that smooth spot. But that don't change the story. This bearing, you can tell it's not great. So if I can get the lighting and everything right, if you look back there, sorry, if you look back there, oh, it's hard to do. The bearing has been spinning because everything's in a bind. That's why this clip I was having so much trouble with. If you could see down in there, but you can't, or can you? Regardless of whatever, but that was spinning, kind of galled that aluminum up. That's why that clip was so stuck. So get some good parts. All right, next morning, I actually uploaded some of this footage and went and watched it. It's a little shaky, so I, there's some setting I gotta turn on or something. But anyway, apologize, I'll get better. Went ahead and took the transfer case off because I got to thinking, I've done this before, and this will be hard to explain at first, but if you see the splines, uh, maybe too much light. Yeah, maybe from that angle. You can see this is different from that. So there's actually two different things that connect on that shaft. And luckily for me, this fell apart and I can kind of show you, but all this would have been in the drum, I guess is what you call it. So when you go to put all this back together and it don't have pressure on it, these can not be phased up with each other. I, th I think I'm gonna have to go down to my transmissions to actually cut an output shaft out off. So when I put all this together, I can align it with it. I don't know, but I know one time I tried this and I like to never got that tail shaft on. This is all garbage. I just wanted y'all to see. That's bad. I'm pretty sure I can tell. But 
I just got to thinking there's no way in heck that I can the tail shaft with the transfer case up there shoved on it just it's not an easy task so at this point got everything getting cleaned up and now I need some parts to go in metal right there so now that my junkyard vehicle is on the lift I got to find another vehicle to go get parts for my junkyard vehicle I bet I got one I ain't even a Dodge fan but it's so funny I'm gonna do a video on all these Dodges got this one that one there's more somewhere, I don't remember. Custom wood grain dash. Oh yeah. So aside from the junkyard that you can see, I've got more stuff. Lawnmowers, wave runners, RVs. That one's actually full of Jeep wheels. I don't even know where that one come from. Hmm. But at one point, this 40-something foot trailer was literally full to the brim of transmissions. And then crap happens and I, sc I scrapped them. That tail housing right there should be all we need. I'm just going to look around. Obviously, there's another one. So, well, I don't know. I need that shaft, but I didn't bring nothing to cut it with. So, I'm going to load it up. Go check it out. This ain't as bad as the transfer case and all that. But it ain't light. So I done showed you how to take apart the other one. Pretty simple. This one I believe is literally the the same. So I'm gonna get it took apart. Not 100%, but I think we're in the good here. I think it's gonna work out better than I even anticipated though. So literally, I wouldn't say everything, but pretty much everything is rare. So technically, that's all I need, I believe. If I can take this apart, this bearing feels great. All the clutches should be good. Everything looks clean. If I can take it apart, and just take this piece out here and replace it with that maybe this will work out better than i thought but i'm not there yet so i'm gonna take it apart and we'll see once again not a transmission guy but i think we're on the right track here never done I, i've never done this i don't care to admit that so i was taking apart the two-wheel drive one here and i was like this shaft cannot be a part of this whole shebang well, I took a clip off, wasn't paying attention. I thought the shaft was gonna fall through. Turns out the bearing come off. So I got me a good bearing for this now. Like, like I said, this is the part I need. So I was trying to get the sprag. That's what a sprag is. I've heard of that. You can see those springs and it's a one way clutch basically. So that's good. Got a good drum, got a good bearing. All that's good. But the only thing now that <clears throat> I hope I'm on the right track is even after I've cleaned it, that's, that's a disaster. That gear would work, but I think there's a clip right here. It's one of them painting the, you know, what ones. But surely to goodness, that drum, or I'm gonna call it drum, drum with a gear in it, it's gotta come off there. So that's the last part. I'm gonna try to get that out and get it swapped. In worst case, I can use this. I don't want to. So yeah, I'm learning. Y'all are learning. We're all learning. Literally this morning I was reading a comment and maybe I'll add the video in here, but a guy, and I've seen it several times and it's cool. I don't like, at first you kind of like take the haters as hate, but it's kind of funny. But he called me a hack job and I was like, I'm pretty sure that's what people want to see on YouTube instead of, you don't want to watch a professional trend. I mean, how'd I say it? Not everybody wants to see a professional do all brand new parts, all brand new this, professional this, get a $10,000 press to do that. It's like, I feel like there's a lot of demand out there for people that like me, and probably like you, that don't have that stuff. So, I'm over here teaching, I don't know. It sounds like it offends me, but it don't offend me. I think it's hilarious that it offends you so much that you have to go out of your way to comment the hack job. I'm gonna keep on doing what I'm gonna keep on doing. Uh, see if I get that apart, and if I get all my ducks in a row, I may, I've never done this, I may sit the camera down and film the entire assembly part of it. Yes. All right, like I said, I've never done a scene like this that I'm aware of, so I'll try it, see how it does. Uh, only thing I noticed, since I'm a hack job, that bushing probably could be replaced. Look at the Jeep. And like I said, I don't sell stuff like this, I'm just trying to fix it for my own good. So don't need the two-wheel drive shaft. What do I think I told y'all? Everything, it worked out like I wanted. I got a time lapse but that's the part I need the rest of the stuff's off the tool drive that was just scrap metal so maybe this will fall in place and I'll probably cut a bunch of scenes out y'all understand 
First scene's going well. I think I'm gonna need to press. The parking sprags, they go towards this end. I did take note of that before I took it apart, which I guess it only go together one way. Uh, yeah, let me, y'all are sitting on the press, so let me use that. I don't know if y'all can see my face, but I swear if somebody would vent a, uh, a rent, -a, rent -a press, because everybody just needs one for just an odd job, and then you don't need it after that. I don't really know why this won't go in there, but this piece right here has so much aluminum and all that sprag material. So I had to press it out of there, so I pressed it back in. Yeah. All right, nothing to it. So now this clip here is very strong, so I would use safety glasses. Pretty sure you can do it by hand, just don't paint your fingers. Yep. Uh, all right, let's remember, step two. Like I said, it's the first time I've ever done this, so. I think next was the drum. Yeah, should only go one way. It's got two grooves and you have to go put it on, go past, past it, and now you install one of these things. Got it in there. Now you pull it back that way. Now install the other one, inside groove. All right, now the sprag. I don't know if grease would be a good idea. I'm just gonna install it dry. So maybe it'll go in the hole, I've never done this. Yes, yes, yes. So I don't know how well you can see, but literally that's like a, it's just a one-way bearing. It'll spin one way, and I think it's actually like a bearing, and then you spin the other way, it just binds up. So, next step. I think next step is this big thing here, but, this is the part I said I need a shaft. What are the odds? Negative. I, I, I'm going to eyeball it as close as I can get it and roll with it because, like I said, I've done it before. So I never took this part apart. Part part. All the clutches are still splined on there. So... Get it off in there. Get the clutches to go in. I'm gonna take the clutches off. All right, it fell more apart. So now I'm gonna install the planetary sun gear, whatever they're called. So it fell in. Now keep them together. Put this drum looking thing. I think there's clutches inside of this. I think those are called the direct drive. Don't hold me to it. So now, start with these. I may regret this. So finally got all them. And this is the part where we have to use the press again. You gotta press this down, install this clip. Give me one second. It's going, it's going good though, pretty easy. All right, I got y'all up close, but I got to thinking, I'm gonna do this again. So I went and cut a piece of shaft off and luckily it's got a hole in it because otherwise I'd be screwed. But watch this, it'll spline up, let's see. So that's a spline and I thought I was bottomed out, but it's kind of hard to do, if you'll spin, now both of those are splined up. So hopefully when I get this together, I'll be able to get this back apart. Try to just make sure they're loose. So now gotta press those down and put the clip on. When I stood it up on the thing here, it actually fell in there even farther. So I went ahead and welded a bolt to it. Just should slide right out, but just trying to be cautious. So got my pieces zip tied. And for whatever reason, the tool drive clip was broke. So I had to go back with a full drive clip. Go. 
like I said, I'm pretty sure they make a very simple tool for this, but not a transmission shop. That's that. Do it by hand. It's farther down there than I realized. Hmm, this side ain't went down. Oh, it hit the bolt. I gotta cut the bolt off an absolute sixteenth of an inch, probably. There we go. I believe it's fully, fully in now. Yep. All right, like I said, I gotta cut the bolt off absolute sixteenth of an inch. Fixed. Now, hopefully, oh yes. So that should slide on very nice. So keep that and zip ties and piece of metal. So crazy. You wouldn't think these would be tools in a shop, but I'm gonna keep them. I probably won't keep the zip tie, I'll be honest. And this. Maybe it won't fall apart now if I stand it up. Use the tool drive bearing with a clip towards the outside of the transmission. I think it's a pretty easy fit. And this is one for sure you want safety glasses. When it come off earlier, whoo, it went flying. Going on is always easier. Got the bearing on. I think we're ready to put it in the housing and then about it. So now I've got my housing. Just try to gently put this over in there. Swing it off in there. Maybe the bearing clip will be better this way. Sit it on the board. Sound like here. Yeah. Finally in there. I don't know if y'all could see off camera. I set up two boards like that and I was drop it and let gravity do the work. So that's clipped in. I'm gonna use this four drive one since it didn't break the gasket. And this is the part I kind of I don't really know. I probably should use the four drive clutches, but I'm gonna trust my gut and go with the two-wheel drive clutches. And since I had all these laid out in order. Yeah, you have to check my work. So lay everything out in order so you know exactly how it goes because this clip looks different than the next clip, but it's what I got laid out right there. It's got the whatever's on it. Should be able to install it by hand, maybe. One clip, two clip. Okay, I'm gonna phase it off to the other one just for just to be sure. Yep, it fits. So now we start stacking clutches. Thick one goes first, and then should be some thin ones followed by one thick one. Yes. Yeah, I guess this is the only one. Hmm. Seems odd. So the last one just takes a little piece of wire clip. I guess they don't have no reason to jump out. I think that's it. I'm gonna clean the gasket surface up, get everything ready for that, and then show this on there, and move on. I hope it's, I hope it's worked. So crazy, like I'm showing you all this stuff. I, I, I don't know what gear this is. I don't know if it's overdrive. I think all this stuff's overdrive. I don't know. Learning's cool though. All right, the next few steps, definitely important. So try to remember them if you're doing this yourself. If you remember, let me turn my light on. Uh, crap, there ain't no way to get down there. But if you remember what I was showing you about park, this rod is gonna have to go through. You can see it won't go, oh, there it did. So, yeah, but like I said, it's gotta be where it can go in park or you're gonna be shoving all day. So this is the part where the shifter, where's it at? Make sure, push Rusty, I had to force it. Yeah, so when you drop down, you'll essentially be in first gear, and that'll have this out there as far as it can, and once you're past it, you're good. Oh, no way, look at that. Remember, I was just telling y'all about these clips break off, and they still work just fine, so. Hack job. Man, I, I really like that hack job name, that's a, but I really like the hack job. That's a, that's gonna give me some, coming soon. This gasket actually started life as when this piece is bolted on, and you have to go in there, you can see just a little bit of reminiscence of it there. Had to rip it all the way and make sure the new gasket fits. So, got that. Don't forget this little piece here. And then the one-way bearing will have a little bitty lip. It goes at the transmission. So what I'm gonna do, 
apply grease around here. That way when you're moving around, it'll, it'll stay up there. So I'm gonna finish that, that's cleaned up. And I need a gasket, I think I got an idea on it. One quick thing I just learned, these things are called double-ended studs, you can order them. I'm sure O'Reilly's got them, whatever. But I've never actually even done this. That's gonna hold the gasket up. And be sure right along this area where all that dirt and grime is to clean it really good. And the only tool you might need is a screwdriver to pick up on this and make it find its home. Go. Set the camera down and see if I can get that up there. Luckily I caught that. This ain't that heavy, but it's for sure not light. And again, it's just me. I, the mechanic one time did tell me don't use Permatex because the, what is it, the, the tolerance is an overdrive shifting or whatever. Just gotta keep finessing it. There's that. Got lucky, we went through part. Now, that's the easiest I've ever done it, I will say that. I'm gonna get it bolted up. Holy moly, I guess I expected this because that's broke, that's broke, that's supposed to be the same size, so all that material has to be somewhere. Man, I wasn't expecting this. Look at that. Mainly the magnet. Golly. But, like I said, i sure I expected that. Obviously that's filter, and then that is the sensor that creates the pressure, and then that is the sensor that reads the pressure. That's what I was kind of trying to think of an analogy. It's like, think of a worker doing work, and then you got management that's actually checking it. So you don't know actually which one's wrong. Is it, a, is it reading the pressure wrong, or is it actually creating the wrong pressure? So when you do them, do them both. I highly recommend getting Mopar. It's the only ones I've actually found that do good. The cheap ones never work out. I don't really think there's much else I'll show you. I'm just curious if it's gonna work. If I get them off and see some, but other than that, I'm just taking them off, putting them back. Well, I'll show you when you get there. So every now and then I do see, well, I mean, y'all seen how much metal's in there. And I wanted y'all live to be here. If uh, they got two little screens. Uh, yeah, yeah, it is. There's absolutely no way, I hope this new camera will read that, but. This is the intake, look at all that little stuff in there, and then that's the outcome. So that screen being stopped up is why it can't create the right pressures. Maybe on a bigger screen y'all can see, but there's just material all in there. I got more light, maybe we can see. So like I said, that's all material right there, metal dust. So on this particular Jeep, I'm gonna gamble and clean them off, and I'm pretty sure that's gonna fix it. Like I said, ain't nothing to it. You just clean all this stuff out, that's the one, try to clean it out if you have to. It's got a little clip you just pull up. Other than that, they much do it. Just changing sensors. Like if you can literally drop the pan, you can probably do this. I'm gonna get back together. I seen something I needed to show y'all. If you look, that sensor, where am I pointing? Right there, park neutral switch. 98 is the only year they use that sensor. Okay, and I know people wanna argue with me that transmissions won't work. Look right here, 93 model. So that's a 90, that should be a 94 model transmission. It was probably made in 93 to put in a 94. Just, just if somebody wanted to argue that a 93 won't work on 98. So I'm pretty sure all that right there belongs right there. That's crazy. Gotta get this cleaned up. Our more hack job from your local decks. Got a 10 millimeter bolt, drilled a hole, permatexted it, and now I've actually used these before. If, as long as you don't have a locking nut, you can back it out and it's not a exact drain plug but it's better than nothing and i did check that won't hit nothing in that particular area i'm gonna like this new hack job stuff i've thought of a lot of stuff in it it does fit me and what's gonna be even funnier rust bucket and y'all know what i'm doing with this jeep but this bolt broke the insert off inside so it's not gonna fall out but i can't get the bolt out this bolt broke this one actually works this one's broke so wait till y'all see what i'm gonna do and if, it's so funny if you follow me you know i'm doing it for a joke but if you don't you think I'm just that sloppy mechanic, so it's kind of fun. But we get that done, that bolted on, put fluid in it and drive it. This actually took a whole lot more effort than you realized it. I actually run one screw up the side of the material and it broke off, but wood bolts, useless. But it's actually doing its job. If you look, that bolt ain't doing nothing, so it's just funny. Hat job. 
Only thing is be sure and put your shifter back on, put it in park, and then I'm not running a four-wheel drive shifter. We'll drive down the road to test everything, and as long as it works, I'm gonna put it in four-wheel drive, and that's all it'll be used for. So, just gotta put fluid in, that's about it. All right, time to dial for some cheap fluid. Had to put it in neutral. Now I'm curious, we got gears. No, I'll get the floor dirty. Oh, reverses the big one, reverses the big one. Come on, this actually has e-brake. Uh, yes. I know y'all can't see, but it's working. It grabbed. I sitting there thinking, I found all that bad stuff and I fixed that. If that don't fix reverse, I don't know. Now, do we have first gear? Pretty sure. I got my fluid sitting up there, so let me uh, get situated. We'll go drive it. I actually enjoyed this video. Doing new stuff that I have no idea what I'm talking about. It's almost dark, but luckily I got some light bars. Be sure, always wear your jacket. Hey, I don't be broke down on the side of the road. No jacket after a big job like this. Park, just be sure. Just put it grandma like in gear. Did not fix it. Dad gummit. Well, that's on me. All right, I know it's completely dark. I'm sorry about that, but just how it timed out. You know, it, it does have all the gears, so I'm gonna have to drop it down and we'll take off. Well, I have no light in here to show you, but we're gonna put it in reverse. So that actually fixed reverse. We just gotta get some good sensors. So like I said, I actually enjoyed that video. I kinda had an idea of what's going on, but digging into stuff that I've never done before, it's kinda fun. So like I said, now I have a reason to do stuff like this, but as far as the sensors, I'll probably order some, put them in if it fixes it, it should fix it. But if it don't, and we have to do more di diagnostics, I'll film it. And I do appreciate it, and I hope you enjoy my hack job.